The way we consume and share news today, it is largely rooted in social media outlets, a reason why it's crucial to look at what's being discussed online. From the hottest issues to trends for our daily social media minute, we're joined by Erica in the studio. Good morning. Good morning. We went from unseasonably warm <laughs> to snow real fast. Yeah, so uh, we saw the first uh, snowfall of the season. Well, not here in Seoul. <laughs> not yet. Uh, way down there. <laughs> South in uh, Jeju-do, okay, <laughs> on Hanasan Mountain, uh, temperatures dipped below zero actually across uh, the nation, pretty much. Yeah, um, you know, uh, but uh, the Gangwon-do province experienced the coldest weather mm. so far this fall slash winter. Is it fall <laughs> or winter officially? I don't know. The lines are blurry. <laughs> you get the message, listeners, right? <laughs> yeah. So Hanasan Mountain, as you'll probably know, mm. uh, is the highest peak in South Korea. It saw the first snow 18 days earlier than uh, last year. Uh, as of 6 a.m. yesterday morning, uh, temperatures were minus 10.8 degrees Celsius uh, on Seoraksan Mountain of Gangwon-do province and minus 7.7 7 degrees Celsius in Daegwalyeong Pass. Now, Paju, uh, which is close to the border, and uh, Cheolong County of Gangwon-do province also recorded the low lowest temperatures of the season at minus 5.7 degrees and minus uh, 6.1 degrees Celsius, respectively. Uh, the weather agency said the first frost of the season was reported in inland areas, okay. including Incheon, uh, as well as Daejeon and Cheonju. Um, you know, uh, just, you know, at the restaurant, right? Yeah. Uh, just until recently, we, we had the a- a- air conditioner on, you know, during the day um, because, you know, it's not a big space. So as, as lots of people come in right. and, you know, they're, they're sitting pretty close to each other. Uh, and to your pretty, open kitchen. Yeah, open kitchen. All the right. heat, you yeah. know, from the cooking, it gets pretty warm. Okay, but uh, oh, I could definitely feel the chill. <laughs> Even indoors. See, that, that that makes things confusing because now you need to circulate the air by opening up the door. Yeah. And it's cold. It's cold. Oh, so we, we got gracious. out of all of the heaters and, oh. uh, you know, blankets for the, you know, for the customers. That was a sudden shift, wasn't yes, it? Very, very sudden. <laughs> okay. Anyways, it's freezing outside this morning. It's mm. uh, I, When I checked this morning, it was about minus four degrees Celsius. Yep. Yeah, morning lows are between minus eight degrees and minus three degrees, uh, three degrees this morning. Okay. And uh, this cold snap that we are currently experiencing mm. is expected to continue throughout the day today okay. uh, and tomorrow. And after that, temperatures will likely uh, go back up to the average yearly, uh, you know, temperature, Mm. 0.5 to 9 degrees Celsius on Wednesday. It's crazy because I grew up in California and that shouldn't feel warm to me, but I don't know (laughs) from what we got yesterday and today. How cold does it get where you grew up? It doesn't. I mean, like the lowest temperature. Uh, I have to think in Fahrenheit. Like, like 10 50, degrees? 60, maybe not even that. Oh, not even that. But, I mean, you get wind, you get a lots yeah. of rain in the winter time, mm-hmm. but it's still around 10 degrees, yeah. I would say, Celsius. Okay. So it's not that bad. Yep. <laughs> winter is here. It's funny. One of our listeners said, uh, one of the other radio shows in Arirang, Radio Clock has bets on when the first snow in Seoul will be. In Seoul? Well, it usually falls um, in late November. Okay. I have no recollection. Yeah, usually it's it's around the third or fourth week of November. Okay. Yeah. Can we put Yerika in the running, please? Yes. Third third week of November. (laughs) (laughs) What do we win? (laughs) All right, guys, just manage your expectations because it's chilly and compared to the daytime highs, there's a pretty big difference there. On to our second buzzword of the day. Oysters and ice cream. Has it always been a sign of decadence, even years and years ago? (laughs) I many, many, many years ago. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Because I've also read at, at a certain point in time, I just don't remember exactly when, uh, oysters were so plentiful yeah. and abundant that it was cheap. Yeah. 
Oh, really? Yeah. Well, it's still cheap in Korea, you know. A lot of my it's foreign friends, true. especially my French friends, they, yeah. they come to Korea. Yeah. And, you know, it's oyster season right now because mm. it's winter. Mm. And uh, I, I always have, uh, you know, parties around Christmas time mm. and yeah. oysters are always on the table yeah. and they're amazed by the abundance of oysters. <laughs> Just never-ending platters of oysters. It's like, isn't o- aren't oysters expensive here in Korea? I'm like, no, actually, not as expensive as... Um, well, many other countries. It's around funny the world. because if you now go to like a more Western style o- oyster bar, yeah. right? And they're pricier. You get, they're pricier. Yeah. But it's, I'm assuming the same, uh, you know, source. Yeah. How does that work? Um, I think uh, the, the, there are different, uh, what is species of oysters? Yeah. Yes. It depends on that. Like ah, the the okay. most common variety, the Tongyang oysters, yes, yes. They, they're, they're definitely cheaper, more affordable. Okay. Than the other, like, I guess it's simple. The more you catch, the cheaper it yeah. is. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Anyways, Thanks, so we're talking about a specific, a very specific and very special, I would have to say, menu, a dinner menu uh, that was on the Titanic, actually. Look at that. Yeah, this menu wasn't quite the last supper for the first class passengers mm. on board the Titanic, but it was almost their last supper. Mm. Uh, the surviving menu from the ship from April 11th of 1912 uh, is apparently the only one of its kind okay. uh, and it's revealed the treats that were served on the doomed ship just three days before it hit that iceberg. Mm. Uh, the menu actually went under the hammer over mm. the weekend. Mm. Uh, the menu details the meal served the day after the ship left Queenstown in Ireland, mm. um, and it was uh, sold by Henry Aldridge and son of Wiltshire, mm. alongside other rare Titanic discoveries, including a tartan deck blanket. Uh, the ti- the menu on the Titanic, this particular menu we just talking about, sold for 83000 pounds pounds, which is around 101,000 U.S. dollars. Isn't it funny what becomes a collectible yeah. and what doesn't? That's sold for $101,000, mm. right. guys. All right, so what has, where has this menu been all this time and who stored it? You know, the menu was found actually in a photo album from the 1960s that once belonged to Len Stevenson, mm. a community historian in Dominion, Nova Scotia in Canada. Okay. Uh, and the menu poses some interesting questions uh, among the questions who grabbed a menu while making for the lifeboats if Great that question. was the case mm-hmm. and what exactly is Victoria pudding that was on the menu oh, so many questions I know it's easier to answer the second question okay. first so Victoria pudding is a, apparently a boiled dessert which was offered uh, you know accompanied by apricots and French ice cream that evening it's made by mixing flour eggs jam brandy, apples, cherries, peel, sugar, and spices. And uh, on the evening of April 11th, that dessert was followed by oysters, salmon, beef, squab, duck, and chicken, which were served with potatoes, rice, and parsnip puree. Now, the dishes are all listed on this uh, water-stained card beneath a White Star logo. Okay, so we figured out what Victoria Pudding was, what else was on the menu. Mm. But, I mean, questions of who grabbed the menu still remains. And as you've said, Yarka, this is the only surviving menu yes. from the evening of April 11th, 1912. That's right. So the manager of the auction house uh, believes that while a few other first class menus survived the wreck, mm. uh, none for this particular evening uh, are known to have survived. Okay. And he has spoken to several museums all around the world and he's spoken to a number of Titanic collectors, but he couldn't find this particular menu anywhere else. I mean, is anyone else kind of uh, amused by that there's a number of Titanic collectors yeah right yeah i mean anyway mm. i wonder how the menu was salvaged from the wreck <laughs> you know what uh who salvaged and how will always remain a mystery uh, titanic mementos mm. fall into broad categories uh each with a different status uh, some were recovered from the wreck uh, some are owned by survivors uh, some like this menu f- from April 11th are likely to have been removed from the ship as keepsakes. Okay. <laughs> and on to our final buzzword of the day. I'm sure you've seen the images. Ah, uh, yeah. And it, it certainly turned heads. A man dressed, in, I'm assuming a man, <laughs> dressed as Spider-Man, intervening in Seoul Subway's altercation. Yeah, so uh, this man, okay, it's uh, a man. in a Spider-Man costume, <laughs> 
uh, was mm. seen restraining a homeless person mm. who was threatening a subway worker. Uh, and then the Spider-Man, after you know resolving the conflict, you know quietly walked away from Chamshil <laughs> Station. Just very nonchalant. Yeah, on Saturday night. Now, in a post that was uploaded to X on Saturday at 9:35 p.m., a witness wrote, "I just saw Spider-Man. What's going on? He was restraining a homeless man who was lashing out at another man in the subway." Is he real? (laughs) Now, this particular post had surpassed 3 million views by Sunday afternoon. I don't know what that tells me. Of course, (laughs) celebrating every day here, that's a great thing. Or do we just really like these clever narratives? It's It's just just amusing. (laughs) You know, in a crowded subway station. I mean, Chumshin Station gets a lot of foot traffic, especially on the weekend. And this man donning red and blue, like tight suits. Just walking around. Saving the day. Saving the day. (laughs) Gets your attention. Yes. So, According to these photos okay. that have been shared on social media and from stories from witnesses, uh, the, the homeless person who had no shoes on mm. uh, took a swing at a man who ass- assumed to be a subway employee. Uh, the Spider-Man who happened to walk by grabbed the homeless man's arms, tried to calm him down. Mm. You know, the, the homeless man could be heard shouting, you know, let me go, let ah. go of me. And every time... The Spider-Man responded, please calm down. <laughs> that really doesn't get old. It's kind I know. of fun to say, Spider-Man responded right? by saying, please and calm down. The video is really funny because, you know, the Spider-Man, he looks as if he's doing a polka dance, <laughs> you know, dancing, <laughs> yeah. because he's holding on to this homeless man who's right. sort of like flailing his, his arms everywhere. So they look like they're in a dance together and observers are heard laughing, you know, at this rather comical scene in the background <laughs> as well. <laughs> so many questions, but the most important one probably, yeah. who is this man behind a Spider-Man suit? We don't know. <laughs> um, you know, somebody did contact the police okay. and uh, they arrived about 10 minutes later. They removed the homeless person from the station, um, you know. Uh, uh, and then, not too uh, a few hours later, okay. uh, an ex user, Twitter user, claiming to be the very Spider Man, wrote, "I saw the homeless man being aggressive to uh, another person, a lady next to me. Called the police. I figured it would take at least ten minutes for this officers, police officers, okay. to arrive. So I intervened to keep the situation under control." Uh, another person added that he occasionally goes to the Thamesville Station area. Because lots of children visit on the weekends and uh, he takes photos with them. <laughs> so this is like charity work for yeah, him? I don't know. What? Yeah. You know, people in, I don't know, in, in different parts of LA, uh-huh. different parts of New York, they get paid to do this. Yeah. Right? You know, but I, I've seen responses under the, the, the news articles yeah. and, uh, you know, YouTube videos, uh, social media videos, and the, the response has been very, very warm. People uh-huh. are delighted by this everyday hero. It's chilly outside. We need heartwarming stories <laughs> and holidays are right around the corner. Yay, long live Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Eric. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.